Hey everyone, today we're looking at factoring. So what really is factoring? We can rewrite many trinomials as the product of two binomials. So a trinomial, remember tri means three, so it's a three-termed expression. Binomials would mean a two-termed expression. So I'm basically taking a trinomial, like the one seen below in example one, and rewriting it as the product or multiplication of two binomials within parentheses. And as I said before, this is called factoring. Now in the previous video, I showed the same notes using the factoring by grouping method. And now I am showing it using the box method, okay? So the process on the left Generally, um, most of them are the same steps. We're still going to use steps one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then it's going to change up a little bit after step five. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. Same process for the beginning. Identify your A value, which is the coefficient of x squared. The B value, which is the coefficient of your x term and your c value, which is your constant. From there, we multiply the a and the c value and fill in our i chart. Remember, our i chart is to help us come up with all of the factors of a and c. a times c is 20, 2 times 10. And what do we list in our i chart? We list all of the products of 20. So all the things that multiply to give me 20. So for instance, 1 times 20. 2 times 10, 4 times 5. But we also need to add at the bottom our B value of the I chart. And our B value is the middle term, negative 9. So in the I chart, it's very important to note that the B value is really important. Because after we have come up with all of our factors of 20 at the top, we now need to find out what which of those factors add up to equal negative 9? 1 plus 20 is 21. Those do not add up to negative 9. 2 plus 10 is 12. 4 plus 5 is close. It's positive 9, though. So that doesn't work for us either. How do we get a negative value? Well, if they're multiplying to give us a positive 20, then maybe a negative times a negative also gives us a positive. So what about negative 1 and negative 20? negative 2 times negative 10, and negative 4 times negative 5. Now, which of those adds up to negative 9? This pair right here. So those are our factors. So here's what we do with the box method that's different than factoring by grouping. First, let's draw our box. Okay. And in the upper left-hand box, we're going to put our x squared term, 2x squared. We're really just bringing it down from the trinomial itself. Okay? And then the c value is going to go in this box, 10. And then what were our two factors we came up with that add up to the middle term, negative 9? Keep in mind it's negative 9x. So we're splitting that into negative 4x and negative 5x. Okay, because those two do add up to the middle term, negative 9x. From here, we are trying to come up with what are the two binomials that would multiply to get each of these boxes. For instance, I know x times x will give me x squared. And to get that 2, one of them needs to be a 2x and one of them needs to be a 1x because 2 times 1 gives us the 2. Now, how am I going to get the negative 5x? That's right there. Hmm, that's an interesting one. The reason why it's interesting is because 2 times any whole number is not going to give me that negative 5 right there. So, Maybe what we need to do instead is maybe the 2x 
doesn't need to be here. Maybe this should be the 2x. Because to get this negative 4x, we would take 2x times negative 2 would give us that negative 4x. So I just had my 2x in the wrong place. Okay. Now to get that negative 5x there, um, we're trying to multiply this times some value here to get this term. So negative 5 times x gives us negative 5x. And we double check to make sure that that negative 2 and the negative 5 multiply to give us the bottom corner, the positive 10, and they do. So now I have my factors, okay? You can see one of them is at, along the top, 2x minus 5, and the other one is along the side, x minus 2. So x minus 2 is one of them. And keep in mind, it doesn't matter which one goes first. And then the other one was 2x minus 5. All right, let's try another one using the reverse box method. Hey there, so it looks like I have already set up a little bit for us. The A value is one, the B value is five, and the C value is negative 14. I started our box with the X squared in the upper left-hand corner and the constant in the bottom right-hand corner. And I also set up our I chart. So once again, in the I chart, we're trying to find numbers that multiply to give me negative 14 but they also have to add up to give me five. So lucky for us, there are not too many things that multiply to give us negative 14. It's either negative one times 14, one times negative 14, or negative seven times two, negative two times seven. So there we have it. So uh, let's look at those and see which ones add up to five, that bottom term. So, let's see what we've got. These add up to 13 and negative 13, so that's not it. These two add up to negative 5, and these two add up to positive 5. Since we want positive 5, these are not our, our factors. Our factors are negative 2 and 7. So we're going to rewrite those factors in our box. So... Remember that our factors added up to that middle term, 5x, right? So we're rewriting 5x as 7x minus 2x because they do add up to 5x. And where did I get the 7 and the negative 2 from? Right here. Now let's come up with what would multiply to give us this box, okay? So we know to get an x squared, it is x times x. That part is easy and is unmistakable because there is nothing else that will multiply to give us that. Now, if I want to get this negative 2x, I need to think about what's going to go right here. Okay, and what number will multiply with the x on the left to give us negative 2x? So I believe it would be negative 2 because negative 2 times x gives us that negative 2x. Now, how do we get the 7x? You can see the top is already x. So what number is going to go here to multiply to give us that 7x? That's right, it's 7. And then double check to make sure the 7 and the negative 2 multiply to give you that bottom right-hand corner, which is negative 14. So now we have our factors. x minus 2, which you see across the top of the box. And since that's a positive 7, it would be x plus 7. And one more. So go ahead and try number three, pause the video and give it a try on your own. I'll give you a hint. The B value is not there. So what would the B value be if we do not see a middle term? Think about that for a moment. Then unpause when you're ready to see the solution. Hey guys, so I have now set up my box with the X squared in the upper left hand corner and the constant negative 49 in the bottom right hand corner. I've identified my A, B, and C values, and now we are looking at the I chart on the right to see what are all the multiples of A times C. In this case, A times C was negative 49, and I wrote down all the possible whole number factors, and they are negative 1 times 49, negative uh, 49 times positive 1, 
and negative 7 times positive 7. Now, notice our b value was missing, guys. There was no x term in the middle, so we rewrite it as 0x. So our b value really is 0. So what of these factors add up to give you 0? Remember, we're looking for numbers that multiply to give me negative 49, which we have found. But they also have to add up to equal, in this case, 0. These two don't cut it. It is negative 7 and positive 7. And remember, what do we do with those? We are writing them in the remaining two boxes. So, but with x's, because negative 7x plus positive 7x add up to that 0x in the middle. Now, remember, we're not done. We haven't actually found the factors. So, in our case, we know that x times x gives us the x squared. To get a positive 7x, we would put a 7 here because 7 times x gives us that 7x. Same process, this would be a negative 7 because negative 7 times x is negative 7x. And we have our factors. The factor along the top was x minus 7 and the factor along the side was x plus 7. Remember, put a plus if it is a positive value. And that is our factored expression, x minus 7 times x plus 7. And you can actually do the box method to multiply these two together to make sure you get the original uh, expression, x squared minus 49. Okay. Now, I do want you to think about this one for a second. Was there a shortcut I could have used on this type of problem that has 0x in the middle? Like if it was x squared minus 36 or x squared minus 100, is there a way that we can do a shortcut without having to do all this work. Really think about it, and if you really want to talk about it with one, your teacher, raise your hand. Have a great day, guys.